Let's talk about combustion. Get out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. How do we recognize and predict the products of combustion reactions? Well, we finally made it. Here at the end of the semester, we've reached all of the different types of chemical reactions. Synthesis, decomposition, double replacement, single replacement, and now finally combustion. But what is a combustion reaction? Well, it's just where a fuel reacts with oxygen and releases heat and light. You're probably familiar with combustion if you've ever sat around a campfire. When we start a campfire, we use fuel such as wood and logs and sticks. Combining that with the oxygen in the atmosphere, we can start a reaction where that fuel releases energy in the form of fire, heat, and light. Now, this type of combustion is called the hydrocarbon combustion. Not all combustion reactions are hydrocarbon combustions, but this is the main one we're going to focus on in our class. A hydrocarbon combustion uses a hydrocarbon as fuel. What is a hydrocarbon? Well, it's basically what it sounds like. It's an organic compound made mainly of carbon and hydrogen. When that fuel combines with oxygen, hydrocarbon combustion always produces the same products, carbon dioxide and water. Knowing that, let's go through an example of combustion. Here it says to write and balance the combustion reaction for propane, you know, like we, we use in a barbecue. Notice it doesn't give us any more information than that, but that's okay. We know enough about writing reactions and how hydrocarbon combustion works that we can write a complete reaction. Here's propane and oxygen, our two reactants, and hydrocarbon combustion always makes carbon dioxide and water. That's the easy part. Now we need to figure out how to balance this reaction. When we balance, we want to take an accounting on both sides. In the reactant side, we can see that we have three carbons, eight hydrogens, and two oxygens. In the product side, it gets a little bit more complicated. We have one carbon and two hydrogens, but we have two oxygen in two different areas. We have two oxygens here and one there, and we need to make sure that we add all those oxygens together. This leads me to my first hint. It might be best to balance oxygen last. It's often the toughest thing to deal with in a combustion reaction. Well, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply carbon dioxide by three by putting a coefficient up front. That allows me to multiply my one carbon by three to balance my carbons on both sides. Now notice that this three also applies to those two oxygens. So I have six oxygens in carbon dioxide, and then there's still the one oxygen over here in water. So adding all those together, I have seven oxygens in total on my right side now. Now let's deal with the hydrogens. If I multiply water by four, that allows me to multiply those two hydrogens by four to get eight and balance them out. Now this four, again, also applies to this oxygen in water, so I need to make sure to account for that. So one oxygen times four is four, plus the six we had over in carbon dioxide, that leads us a total of 10 oxygens in the product side. Now we can go ahead and balance our oxygens in the reactant side. Well, two goes into 10 five times, so I'm gonna go ahead and multiply my oxygen by five, allowing us to balance both sides. All right, here's a practice for you. I recommend pausing this video and trying to balance this reaction yourself. It is a little bit challenging, I'm not gonna lie, but I'll teach you a little trick on how to do it. Did you try the practice? I hope so. Sometimes racking your brain and trying to solve these tough problems makes your brain a little bit better at doing these types of challenges. Well, again, we can go ahead and easily write this combustion, combustion reaction. So here's ethane and oxygen. Our fuel and oxygen are part of the hydrocarbon combustion in the reactant side. And that always forms carbon dioxide and water because this is, because this is a hydrocarbon combustion. Now let's go ahead and balance. On my reactant side, I have two carbons, six hydrogens, and two oxygens. In my product side, I have one carbon, two hydrogens, and three oxygens again. I'm going to save oxygen to the very end. All right, I'm going to write a coefficient up here. This is going to be a little bit unconventional, but you'll see why in a little moment. To balance my carbons, I'm going to start with a coefficient of two in front of carbon dioxide. By doing that, that balances out my carbons. But again, I need to apply this to both oxygen. So two times two is four, plus one is five. Now I'm going to go ahead and balance out my hydrogens. I'm going to put a coefficient of three in front of water. And that, go, and that is going to help me balance out my hydrogens. 2 times 3 is 6, which balances out my hydrogens. And then 3 times this 1 oxygen is 3, plus my 4 over here. That leaves me 7 total oxygens. 
All right, this is where things get a little challenging because two does not go into seven. So what can I do here? Well, here's another trick you can use for combustion reactions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna give oxygen a coefficient that has a decimal, and then we're gonna multiply everything by two. So what I can do here is if I multiply oxygen, my two oxygen by three and a half, that gets me to seven. That balances out my oxygens. But we've never done this before, and it's technically not a legal move for a regular reaction. You can't have three and a half oxygens. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our entire reaction, every coefficient, in order to get this three and a half to be a whole, we're gonna make sure to multiply everything by two. I'm gonna take my one ethane, I'm gonna multiply it by two, my three and a half oxygens and multiply it by two, my two carbon dioxides and multiply it by two, and my three waters and multiply it by two. When I do that, here are my new full integer coefficients. And if I multiply all of my reactants and products by two, then they're still balanced and I'm still able to write a complete balanced combustion reaction. So this is a second hint you can use for combustion reactions where oxygen isn't easily multiplied. Before we end, I wanna talk about two special types of combustion reactions. One of them is called photosynthesis and the other one is respiration. You're probably familiar with photosynthesis in plants and respiration, this is when we breathe. Now these two reactions are very special types of combustion reactions. Photosynthesis, I like to call reverse combustion. If you take a look at photosynthesis, this is what happens inside the chloroplast of plants. This cell, this organelle inside the plants, takes up carbon dioxide and water. It also absorbs the energy from the sunlight and it turns it into simple sugars and oxygen. It turns it into glucose and oxygen. Now these glucose and oxygens are very useful to animal species. We can take these glucose and oxygen and we eat them and absorb them ourselves. We as animals take those things and we use them in the form of respiration. Respiration is where we breathe. I like to call respiration slow combustion and it's the reverse of photosynthesis or it's a regular combustion reaction so here we're gonna take those sugars like we could be glucose or sucrose or fructose there's lots of different types of sugars that we ingest and we take in oxygen typically the oxygen comes from the plants that give them off out out in our atmosphere and we turn those two things back into carbon dioxide and water. Our body also produces energy in the form of ATP that allows our bodies to move and to have energy to do the things that we need to do. So this is a constant cycle of two different types of combustion reaction, photosynthesis and respiration that work together to allow plants and animals, the two kingdoms to live and harmonize. That leads us to the end of our notes. Now's a good time to take a moment to review and highlight key terms, pattern ask questions, and summarize and answer the essential question. Good luck.